Well, good evening, everyone. Mikey Kung Pao back here. I'm sorry about that little April Fool's joke. Okay, that's just my little diversion because I worry about this Jody Arias getting off. The fact of the matter is, I will never think her innocent. What can the defense do now? The prosecution put up a beautiful case, show all her rise, premeditation, everything else. And the defense put nothing but rain uh, witnesses up who just say whatever rise Jody tell them. There was no evidence there on the defense side. So anyway, but what we want to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about her premeditation, because that's what she needs for first degree conviction and a death penalty if the jury should be so bold as to give it to her. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how to calculate the the uh, odds of the premeditation and uh, see if there's any way any reasonable doubt can be found there and we're gonna find there is no way okay so first of all uh, you know Jody a pacifist we all know that the kind of pacifist she are right here so we're gonna look at all the things that she do I'm having a hard time reading I think I need my Jody grasses don't you these might these are my Jody pres prescription grasses right here I gotta put them on like before uh, that way I can see like she do in court, okay? So, what do we got? Uh, first of all, um, we're going to talk about all the things that she says she do and see what the odds might be that she do those things. And uh, even though I hate math just like you do, I'm going to give a tiny little math lesson. I promise it'd be very, very short and easy, okay? Well, you can actually apply a probability calculus to this question of premeditation. You can do the same also for reasonable doubt. So uh, we do that maybe in another video. But right now I'm going to show you a problem. Okay. And here how it, how, how it works. Everyone know what this is, right? Lotto, lotto ticket. Not going to show you my number. You're going to write them down and win instead of me. Okay. I put that aside before you take my number. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you first of all, how do you calculate the odds you're going to win that lottery? Okay. Here how you do it. Okay. You do uh, 49, let's say you got 49 number, right? So you got uh, six chance, because they're going to pull six balls, okay? So you got six chance in 49 uh, for the first one. Then you got five in 48 balls, because one came out already. And four in 47 and so forth. Three in 46, two in 45, one in 44. Okay, what you do is you multiply those out. And what you end up with is you end up with, see them numbers there? I got to read them to you. Uh, you end up with a 720 over like billions and trillions. But anyway, when you divide that out, it's about 14 million to one. That your odds of winning the lot, and that's how you calculate it, okay? See that little, oh, with that little doodler down there. Anyway, of course, your odds and my odds of winning are not 14 to, million to one. Our odds are about zero, okay? Um, if we live a trillion lifetimes. But anyway, we buy a Rato ticket anyway. It's a good investment for a dollar, don't you think? Because it gives you some hope that you can stop doing that miserable job you're doing. And uh, for a dollar, that's a pretty good investment. Okay, anyway, let's move on. So, how do we calculate the odds on Jody's stories and her premeditation? It's very simple. Hypothetic hypothetically, okay? We say, um, let's say the odds that her story be true, that she rent a rental car in uh, Redding and not Wairika and get the red car and not the white car. Say that a, a reasonable person, maybe one in 10 chance that would happen right here, okay? And uh, maybe one in 40 chance somebody get gas cans and on and on and that thing. We're gonna look at all them calculations and then, what that there? Oh, another doodle, that the pacifist Joey. What else we got on here? I think we got uh, toilet paper, right? And we got uh, titty pop and uh, what else on there? Uh, a rope that 500 feet long that have to be cut by Travis and some ninja. Okay, anyway, uh, what we're going to find when we do this probability calculation, we're going to give Jody the benefit of the doubt, and we're going to make probabilities better than they really are. So if a reasonable probability that somebody going to go get three gas can uh, down in LA and fill them all up, to go to Arizona. If that reasonable, say, a thousand to one probability anyone would do something like that. Have you ever done that? I never do that. Anyway, uh, but let's say there's a thousand to one chance someone do that, okay? We're gonna make the odd much better in Jody's favor and say a hundred to one. Then we're gonna look at each element of what she do, and when we add them all up, we're gonna find out that if you took a hundred billion stars in a hundred billion galaxies, uh, and you said, I got one chance in all of that number of billions and trillions and quadrillions, 
that's the odd in the probability calculation that Jody, uh, all these things you do, would not be premeditation. So the fact of the matter is, it about infinity to one again, ta, when you put this cumulative case all together. So we're going to go look on the computer for a minute. That's going to be a little bit longer video tonight. I hope you're a little bit patient with me. I feel like I got to make up for that uh, April Fool's Day thing I do. Okay, anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I'm back. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a little trip with Jody. See what she do on this premeditating murder trip. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to see here, we're going to see that uh, she started off here in Wairika, right up here. Now, if she were going to uh, see this Brian Burns guy and she were going to do, she says she broke and everything, got no money. And uh, what we're going to find out eventually is that she borrow a bunch of money and do all kind of things that make no sense if you're broke. And uh, so her trip make no sense in the first place. But here what she do. Now, she could have gone to Utah to the Brian guy and gone this way. Okay, pretty cruise, not too far. Go over there, go over to Utah. Great big Mormon tabernacle and everything. She says she's such a good Mormon and everything. You think she want to take picture of that. She say the whole reason for this trip was to take picture. But she don't take no picture. In fact, she says she never go anywhere without her camera. Uh, where is the camera uh, that she took with her that she never go anywhere without? And where this picture she planned this whole trip about, so she say. And to go see this Brian Byrne guy. Anyway, so what she do instead? Let's see what she do. Instead of doing that, um, she go down here, down here, uh, down. Uh, well, first she go here. Uh, I'm going to do a quick quick one, then we backtrack and show you. she go way down California, okay? she go way down, she cut over to Santa Cruz and Monterey, then she go back to Serena's, go back over here, and go, uh, you know, actually, how I went on, go this way, go down, down, go down some more, all the way to Pasadena, way down here, okay? Then she's going to go, uh, from there, she go way, way out here, down there to Mesa, she commit that murder, okay? Then she backtrack. When she go from there, she go up here, and she go. She say that she wake up and from her fog out here someplace, and then she go up and go across Rake Mead, and then she gotta go from from Las Vegas, and she gotta go up this Highway 15, keep it going, uh, way up there to Utah, and uh, finally she get to Brian Burn Place a, a day rate, okay, and then uh, eventually she come back the way she should have came at the first place, and go all the way back home again, okay. So then we're gonna go, all right, so back up here. Now, so that like 2,700 miles or something, a huge trip uh, for somebody who broke and uh, say they got no money and the car being repossessed and everything. Now we're gonna bro this up a little bit and uh, go step by step and see how much her story makes sense. Okay, so first of all, she starts in Wairika. Now, we know uh, reading up to this, okay, this whole point here on uh, June like 2nd, uh, there are all these phone calls going back and forth, you know, like 14 calls she make to Travis, okay, and he only call her back once or twice, and uh, so we know she obsessed, even though she says she not. Uh, nobody else know this going on. She's not telling anyone she's gonna go see him, but she calling him like mad, okay. A week before that, uh, you know, she had only moved out to Wairika a couple months before. I thought maybe that would motivate Travis to get her to stay there in Arizona with him, and he say, "Good riddance. I hope you go there forever." Uh, anyway, that what he's thinking. Uh, now, a week before she go, none of her things are working, none of her tactic. So uh, she stage a break in at her grandpa at home, steal a 25 um, semi automatic gun, uh, look, look like this, you know, just a little gun, you know, little girly gun I told you before. Not the kind of gun Travis would ever have. So we know she'd take that with her. And um, so we will calculate the odds of this happening later. But uh, then what she do from there, okay? Uh, she don't want rent a car in Wairika. She says she broke, but she rent a car to take the trip instead of take her own, which is going to be repossessed soon, so she don't have to worry about putting miles on it. Anyway, so let's follow in her track and see what she do. By the way, when that gun stolen from her grandparent house, uh, which we know she took, they didn't take other things they would have took if someone break in there. Okay, they didn't take uh, uh, shotguns and rifles and things like that that was right there next to it. Okay, anyway. Um, no expensive stuff that was there. So she go down the first day. This was uh, uh, first day on her way to Reading, like June 1st. 
And she'd go all the way down here, 90 miles to rent a car. Don't rent one at home. Don't want no one to see her. Okay. She'd get to the rental car place, and uh, she'd tell the guy, uh, don't give me that red car you have for me, that nice car. I want an unobtrusive car. So he remember her, and he remember she brawned at the time, uh, not brunette. Anyway, uh, he won test testify early on the trial. So now she keep going. She keep going down here, down Highway 5. And uh, I know this whole area very well. Cause I, I live down here, Santa Cruz. I've driven back and forth this one, you know, a couple dozen times. And all the places she go, I, I have gone. Anyway, so we go down here, go down here. And um, she come down to Bay Area. Okay, now, about uh, Monterey, she spend the night. Um, that would be um, down here, that right down here on the other end of the bay, and uh, she spent the night there, and uh, she spent the night with an old boyfriend. Okay, so you got like she saw like four old boyfriend on this trip, well three old boyfriend and a new boyfriend. Uh, this uh, little a uh, wallflower virgin, uh, seeing all kind of boyfriends, and she getting money from them and everything, and gas cans and everything else. Anyway, she go to Monterey, and uh, she stayed overnight with Daryl. You know, the guy that she dumped as soon as she meet Travis. You know, the one uh, that Jody who say you never cheat on anyone. Uh, it was cheating if you go date someone else. You should be commit for life. Okay, so this guy do everything in the world for her for years. Let him uh, give her a job and give her money. Give her a house, everything under the sun. Take her in as his own, like, you know, raising his little boy and everything. Soon she meet Travis, she dump him frat. Okay, so that's the kind of girl she is. All this crap that she say. Anyway, so she spend the night. She come back. Uh, oh, by the way. She get gas can from this guy, and she was making many calls to him first uh, to make sure he's gonna have them gas can ready for her. Two five gallon cans, okay? So we know that. Uh, uh, actually, he over here in Santa Cruz. Okay. Anyway, uh, so she take the she take the gas can, uh, and she uh, Matt McCartney, the one she spent the night with. I'm sorry, I'm getting my, myself all confused. This trial so complex and everything. Anyway, Matt McCartney. Okay, then she see Daryl, her old boyfriend. And uh, Matt McCartney, supposedly a guy never going to turn on her in any way, will ride for her no matter what. I think uh, Juan going to bring him on, Rita, and surprise her. Uh, anyway, so after that, by now, now we're getting to um, uh, the 3rd of June. And uh, what she do? She go to Serena's over here, okay? And she stop there, and she get a deluxe manicure, she say. Okay, because, you know, she in such a hurry, and she have no money. Now, I don't think she were getting a manicure. I think she were getting her hair dyed brown. Okay, so anyway. Uh, and she go over to Highway 101 after that. Oh, no, one more thing in Serena's. She buy another five-gallon gas can at the Walmart. Okay, and then she say she take it back right after that. Who do that? We're going to assign a probability to that for our calculation. Anyway, no one do that. No one buy it and then take it back same day when they're on a trip. So anyway, we get on Highway 101. Now she go down. Coming down here now, like, um, all the way down. And, uh, by the way, she says she's going to go down to San Diego. That's the purpose of her trip. Take picture of that little baby down there, new little baby friend of her. She never take no baby picture, though, and she never even tell them she's coming. She's going to spend $1,000 on this trip and not tell them they, she coming? And, and, you know, for someone who broke and everything and, and, and running up debt and borrowing money from boyfriend? Anyway. So, what she do? Uh, now we're on the 4th of June, uh, day of the murder, okay? And uh, she in Pasadena, and what she do there? She fill up her tank, and even though she say she have all them gas cans, she told Juan Martinez, oh, I have all those so I can save money, and uh, not buy gas in California, because it's too expensive. So what she do? She fill them all up in California, where it's really expensive. She fill all of them, and Juan got the receipts, okay? So he slowly showed her that one. Now she go east, okay? And uh, look, obviously she planned this huge route at 2700 mile so she could find a way to go to Arizona, kill Travis, no one know. But anyway, so now what she do from there, okay? She go east to Arizona and she go down here to Mesa. And we wish she don't go there because we know what happened next. Okay, she show up at Travis house and uh, she do all the murdering and everything. All the stabbing after she get him relaxed and uh, have sex with him, get him in the shower. And uh, we see Rita that she uh, thinks she really get to waste with something. She's smiling. Okay, she don't feel bad about this at all. 
she think, oh, I put one over on him. He's going to dump me? He's not going to dump me. He's not going to Cancun with anybody. All right, so now she go back up here and, uh, you know, head back, head back up to Nevada. And what's she doing along, along the way? Okay, her cell phone, she turned off her cell phone along the way of this route. And uh, when she's going to Arizona, and she don't turn it on again until she get up here by Nevada. Okay, then, uh, so she don't want anyone to know she's down there in uh, Arizona. And that's why she put all that gas can in her car, too. So she never have to stop for gas. And there are no receipts in Arizona, okay? She got receipt everywhere else, not Arizona. Okay, all part of premeditation. Okay, then she go up here, and she go across Hoover Dam. Maybe the 25 automatic she get rid of down here in Lake Mead or something. Lake Mead or some other rig she cross later. Uh, anyway, uh, she don't take any picture around this way. She said the whole purpose of her trip. Okay, now she says she in a fog, okay, at the point. But look what she do. She called Travis a few hours after she killed him, and I want you to listen closely to the voicemail she leave him. I'm going to pop it up and we listen to it. Prior to coming to court, did you have occasion to listen to Exhibit 365? Yes, I did. And is that the voicemail that was associated with that call that we just referenced? Yes, sir. I move for the admission of Exhibit 365. This is like one piece of the mountain of evidence again. Does this sound like a girl in a fog to you? I want you to listen to this. I know Leslie called you, so I already talked to her, so uh, you can call her back if you want, but it's not necessary. Um, my phone died, so I wasn't getting back to anybody. Um, and what else? Oh, and I drove 100 miles in the wrong direction. Over 100 miles, thank you very much. So yeah, remember New Mexico? <clears throat> it was a lot like that. Only you weren't here to prevent me from going into the three digits, so fun, fun. I'll tell you all about that later. Um, also, when we were talking about, <clears throat> when we were talking about your upcoming travels my way, I was looking at the May calendar, duh. So I'm all confused. Um, but Heather and I are going to see Othello on July 1st, and we would love for you to accompany us. Hey, uh, isn't Othero uh, a prey about somebody who murder somebody in a jealous rage? I believe that was the, the card that prey. Anyway, let's go on. Um, I don't know when Team Freedom's event is, though. But, you know, it's on the list, so we could do, um, we could do Shakespeare, Crater Lake, and the coast. So, if you can make it. If not, we'll just do the coast in uh, Crater Lake. Yeah, we can do the coat and Crater Lake if you can make it. I think you know, Jody, he ain't going to be making it. Okay, so uh, this is what kind of phony fraud she is. We're going to do a video on, on all her evil things that she do in another video. Okay, get rid of that. Anyway, so she she read that voicemail up here someplace. Okay, she crossed over there. Now she's going up to... Uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it unless I do that. Okay, so... She's going all the way up to Utah and uh, up to Salt Lake City, okay? Now, suppose every, uh, she's a good Mormon and everything, and uh, she goes see Brian, uh, this Brian guy, and uh, she's climbing all over him, okay? Trying to have sex with him, and he don't want to. And uh, just a few hours after she murdered Travis, uh, 29 stabbings and a throat thrashing and a, and a shooting him and everything. And maybe that gun down here in the Salt Lake or, or in Utah Lake or someplace. Anyway, we don't know what the gun is. Uh, okay, so... After all that, uh, this is uh, now June 4, after the murder and everything. And she told Brian Byrne that she a day rate because um, she day rate because she get rost someplace out there and go to sleep. All right, now, finally she go home. She go back home, uh, which she should have done in the first place. I, I get a little confused. Okay, here we go. No, she go home this way. That's the way she should have gone in the first place. She go see that guy. Brian, okay, she go out here and uh, come back to Wairika, okay. So that her trip, and it make none of it make a bit of sense. And uh, so I wanted you to see that before we do our probability calculus. Uh, and one other thing I wanted to show you, you know, when when she went down here at uh, Serenus and everything, um, since she says she on this trip to take picture and everything, the thing about it is this section of the coast here. Big Sur Coast, most beautiful section of the coast, maybe in the whole world. And if you go this way down Highway 1, instead of the way she go, 101, when she went to Serena's to buy gas can, okay, 
it is a gorgeous and beautiful picture taking opportunity. Do she go that way? No. Okay, it only add about one hour to your trip. That the one hour she spent in Serenus having her hair done, I mean her nair done, she say. Okay, and one other thing, to even, and by the way, you know how this Nermi guy now saying, hey, um, you know, uh, Juan Martina misbehaving out of court and everything. Uh, I want you to know that when I went on this trip down here, I saw Nermi misbehaving I, I, because I, there's video of him. I want to show you. Um, where it at? Um, here it is, right, right here. Okay, this was Nermi right here, what he was doing. See, see, he, see, see, he trying to influence jurors right there. When That's what I think. He's trying to get like someone to come sign an autograph. Nobody would. Okay, so never mind that dummy guy. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, one more little thing. Uh, Jody, when she uh, stopped at the red to car play, she looked like that, a blonde. Okay, we know that. Uh, when she show up at Travel House, she looked like that, a brunette, you see there, okay? So, I, I break out the naughty bit. Anyway, she no turn on to me. Though people hate a Seishihara out of their mind, in my opinion, okay? Anyway, um, and, uh, you know, she get very busy um, when she around uh, this Monterey Bay here, and uh, her old boyfriend, and going to Walmart and everything. This is what she were doing there. Um, she was getting all of this. Okay, and once you're in Pasadena, she's filling them all up. So that's the only thing we need to know about this right now. Now we're going to go on. I know I'm going a little bit wrong, but we're going to wrap this up now. Uh, with a little bit of commentary we'll be done. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up by looking at the probability calculation for a moment of all the things Jody do. i got to read these to you. I could not do it while we were doing the map and the trip and everything. I get too confused, you know. Uh, but let's take a look. Let, first of all, remember, this is the girl that were doing all the tire thrashing and then home invading and climbing through doggy door and all harassing girlfriend Lisa, a very nice girl and uh, Lisa couldn't take her harassment no more, broke up with Travis. And uh, another girl, same thing, uh, Mimi, nice girl Mimi say, hey, I don't know. So uh, after all of that, so we know Jody uh, have this history of obsessive and uh, compulsive and jealous uh, behavior possessive. You know, she's the one that got that uh, shirt made up to say, I belong to Travis or Travis Alexander's or whatever. We know Travis don't get that. You know, he don't, he embarrassed her walking around like that. Anyway, uh, so let's look at the probability, okay? And uh, see if there's any kind of reasonable doubt on her story. Now, what the probability she gonna have a uh, 25 caliber semi-automatic stolen from her grandparent house, uh, same caliber killed Travis, one week before she go, uh, right around the same time she obsessively calling him, and then that the kind of gun do the crime, okay? I think probability of that about one in 1,000, but let's give Jody benefit of doubt and say only one in 100, okay? And they don't take anything else. Trip plan. She make a trip plan when she broke, and uh, she says she's gonna go do photography, um, and that the proper of a trip, and to meet the new boyfriend for, uh, briefly up in Utah. So what the probability she's going to make a trip plan like that? Going to be very expensive. Go 2,800 miles. Go down to San Diego. Go to places and she take no picture. She take no picture of all the monument and the, the Mormon tabernacle cathedral is supposed to be her, the, you know, the mo main monument, Mormonism and everything. Where her camera that she say she never go anywhere without? Probability all that happened? I'm going to say, you know, she'll be 500 to 1. We give her the benefit of the doubt, say 100 to 1, that somebody do that. Okay, how about the camera? Uh, the rental car. What's the probability somebody going to do a rental car? I'm going to really give her a break on this one, even though she broke and everything, and say probability 10 to 1. Okay, maybe she thinks she's going to save money somehow, but make no sense at all. Go 90 miles from home. What's the probability someone do that? Uh, go 90 miles from home. They don't want to be seen. She give a different reason. Okay, you get the idea. I'm going to run through the really fast so I don't bore you to death. But I think you're going to be interested in the cumulative case. Because when we put all these together at the end, we're going to see what the probability are that her story plausible or possible. Uh, and that uh, maybe some way to rule out premeditation. And we're going to find out that ain't no way. Okay, anyway. Do uh, you know that Jody put up a YouTube a uh, tribute site to Trava one week before she go get give me a minute my throat a little dry now I have a little remember I get so excited in that that video uh, last week 
and now I have a little vino, a little Cabernet Sauvignon. Then I don't get so upset no more. A little Moreau or something each night. Okay, she put up a Travis YouTube video site uh, one week before, just before she go murder him, okay? That's the weird kind of thing that psycho bitch do all the time. Uh, I, I think the probability of that timing, uh, 500 to 1, but I'm going to give her a break again and say that, like, 30 or 40 to 1, okay? Uh, one chance in 40 somebody would ever do that. Um, what the probability that this trip she take to, tra to see Travis secretly, that no one know about, what happened just before he gonna go to Cancun? Is she not a jealous, possessive, raging bitch want to kill him so he can't go with someone else? Okay, I know everyone say, all you stupid Jody fan clubs say, oh, she know about that trip for months and a year and everything. Yeah, but now it's coming right up, isn't it? And nothing she do would working to try to get him back. She, she was trying everything in her power with the, with the crazy behavior when she lived in Arizona. Then she finally say, okay, I had to move to Wairika. That will do it. Oh, he'll stop me because he think he's going to love me and I can capture him with sex and everything. Dirty sex. He say, hey, go ahead. I even give you a car. Take a car with you. Uh, hook it up to Utah. Of course, you break it and everything. But anyway, um, so she go to Wairika. None of that working. All her call to him, not working. Nothing working. Now it's a week away. And uh, she hear that he want to get married. We know from the text and the email and everything. He want to go and get and uh, get to know this girl a lot better. He want to get married soon and stop being so wild and sowing wired oats all the time and everything. And so uh, she really mad now. Plus, he ruse all that weight and get in shape. And she say, he don't do that for me. Now he gonna go do it for some other girl, go to Cancun? No way. Okay, he not going. So anyway, I think she was gonna give him one chance. Okay, to back out his plan and get back together with her. And uh, after she have sex with him and everything, she say it's not gonna work. Uh, she get him in the shower and she launch her surprise attack with the knife. Which, by the way, premeditation is part of the equation because uh, she say that the gunshot come first. And we know that not true. Cause we got ton of evidence to show otherwise. Look at my other video. I'm not gonna do that all over again for you. Uh, but everybody show that. Uh, including uh, all the forensic expert and uh, other forensic experts come on the TV and assess that situation. They have many pieces of evidence to say the stabbing came first. Premeditation. Okay, first degree. What else happened? What the uh, odds that she gonna plan a trip like this and go see Travis at the very time all her roommates are gone? She checked on that in advance to make sure that they be gone. Okay, I give that probability very small. Probably 500 to 1, they all be gone once you go there to do murdering. But we're going to give her a break again and uh, make it much smaller and say 1 in 20 chance. What the, what the chances that a guy going to be wrong that she a brawned when she rent a car and uh, she a brunette when she get to Travis' house? And uh, maybe he wrong. Maybe he remember it wrong, okay? So we're going to give her a break. Say um, maybe a 1 in 10 chance that part of the story correct. Uh, but he seemed like a good witness to me. Maybe we give him one in five. Okay. The red car chain to the white car. How many people going to do that? Not many. But we give him a break again and say, okay, one in five chant, reasonable someone do that. How about all those calls to borrow them gas can from her ex-boyfriend? Okay, guy she dumped, that poor Daryl guy with the boy and everything. Okay. Uh, I say someone going to obsessively call someone over and over to borrow a gas can. She never do it before. She'd been driving all over the place before, and she never borrowed three or four gas cans. She'd drive in the desert before, and she never borrowed a bunch of gas cans and buy them. I say odds of that part of the store being true. Why she get them? A thousand to one. But we're going to give her a break again and say there are one in a hundred chance that part of the story makes it. How about her itinerary to El Rey and San Diego? Okay, uh, she says she's going to take picture of this baby, but she don't call and tell them, even though she make all this prans and everything, to spend all this money and go way out of her way, on her way to this new boyfriend guy, supposedly, she's going to go see. Okay, I say that uh, maybe one chance in a hundred that part of the story could have any plausibility to it. Okay, how about buying a gas can in Serenus and then taking it back right away, okay, before you continue on your journey? Will you stop at a Walmart and get something you think you need uh, on your way on a trip and then leave the parking lot and then get a few miles down the road and say, hmm, you know, I don't think I need that gas can after all. I think I just go take it back. And what are the odds uh, the Walmart who 
Look, they track everything under the sun. They got an inventory system you wouldn't believe, okay? Whatever you think about Walmart, certainly the inventory system were good. Uh, you know, all that stuff they bring from China. Which, by the way, do you know that in China we have this thing called healing herbs and uh, spices and everything? And, uh, but it's very polluted over there in China. So now what we do instead is we put like heavy metals and uh, chemicals and things in everything. And then we ship it to everyone over here in the United States. Okay, and it worked very good. So you, you get to sprinkle like radiation and stuff onto your cereal in the morning. And you think if you're getting something from China, you know. Anyway, that an aside, I'm sorry. Don't know where I'm going with it. Uh, so buy a gas can, take it back. No record at Walmart. No chance of that. 5,000 to 1, but we're going to give Jody a break again and say, okay, maybe 1 in a 1,000 chance that be. Okay, even better, 1 in 500. Okay, sorry I'm going so wrong. I feel very strongly. Okay. How about stopping for a manicure when you're broke? I don't think so, but I think really she's stopping to hair dye her hair, you know, bra um, from, from brown to brown. Okay. Okay, now she go to L.A., fill up a gas can. She say, oh, the reason I have the gas can so I can save money, not fill her up in California. Go fill her up in uh, Utah or Arizona or Nevada. But then not what she do. She fill them up in California. Okay, so what she told Juan is it was either a rye or she out of her mind. Anyway, a chance of that story being accurate, so, so slim, a thousand to one. But we give her to give her a break again. Say one chance in 50, there any plausibility at all to that. And by the way, um... The chance that she turned her cell phone, the chance her cell phone die, you know this chick could never get off the damn phone, calling obsessively all the time. She got that thing plugged right into the cigarette writer, okay? It not rushed the charger, and uh, uh, the only reason that it go off is because she turned it off before she go to Arizona, and then uh, she turned it back on when she get up uh, by Nevada, okay? So everything she do, trying to cover her track and premeditate, no one knows she that, okay? Uh, now, just what it the so I'm gonna give that one, yeah, I'll still give her a break. See, 30, one chance in 30, that story. Uh, how about the story about the license plates? She take off the license plates. She don't want anyone to know it her going there. So she take them off. Then she make up a story about, oh, I went to the Starbucks for a couple of minutes to get some coffee. When I came out, some, some mysterious uh, skater people around, you know, and uh, suddenly uh, they all reeve. And uh, I get in my car and I back out and I see a reflection of something. It's uh, like a license plate or something. I don't know what it is, laying on the ground. Juan really nailed her on that one, by the way. Go back and look at that testimony. Anyway, she get out, pick it up. Don't even know if it go on her car, supposedly. And she put it in her car anyway. Does that make any sense to you? And besides, are the screws for the license plate to attach them? Are they all still on them four screws? Did the, did the uh, mysterious uh, uh, mean skater people put all the screw back in for her? Uh, so that so she could come and find her print. Completely bizarre stuff. And then she put the plate back on upside down after in her big rush, you know, or in her fog or whatever. Okay, right after she could travel. Okay, so we get that one. Uh, that should be like a one chance in 5,000 or 5 million that would happen. You ever heard of that happening to anyone ever? Okay, we're going to give her a break though. Say, uh, write some break story, one chance in 500. Okay, and that's being generous. Okay, anyway, no trace of gas receipt in Arizona, but we got gas receipt everywhere else. What's the chance of that? We'll give her a one in 20. Okay. Uh, not tell anyone about the trip. Uh, trip to go see new boyfriend and everything. Not tell anyone else. She, before, she always tell anyone her, her agenda and her, her itinerary. You know, all these calls to Travis and everything. She not tell anyone she going there. Okay, I think this is a big wrong shot, but we still give her a break. One chance at 40, that true. Okay, new boyfriend. Uh, and then she go back home. Okay, there are many, many other things. I, I'm not going to keep going down the wrist. Because let me tell you something. When you add, oh, I showed you before how you do the probability calculus. Now we look at, the, now we look at the Jody probability calculus, A through Z, and I tell you what it come up to. It come up to trillions of quadrillions of gazillions of bazillions to one. Not even that. Infinity. Okay. So, the chance that Jody, uh, all her story, line up, and not equal B premeditation. The chance of that are zero, absolute zero. And so you can do a similar probability calculation on your own. You don't like my numbers? Plug in your own. Don't matter, because you're still going to come up with millions and billions to one. 
if you do it right, even if you give her a total break on every one of them numbers. Okay? So there's no way, no way a sane jury cannot find her guilty of premeditated first degree murder, need the death penalty, or at least rife without parole. All right. What else we got to say tonight? Um, just going to tell you, future video, we're going to talk about death penalty, and we're going to talk about uh, reasonable doubt, which you can apply the same kind of calculation to, and we can see that uh, there's no chance for reasonable doubt. Uh, even if you think a chance of, one, of a reasonable doubt, one in a thousand, the person don't do it. In Jody's case, it's one in 87 trillion. So, no reasonable doubt here. Not even 87 trillion. It's one in, it's infinity. Okay, odds better you win the state lottery 87 times in a row every week. Odds of that better than Jody be innocent. Okay, so, uh, what else are we going to talk about? Um, so, death penalty, we're going to talk about the evil of Jody. Show you why we know she's a sociopath and dope characteristics. Sorry I go for wrong tonight. So, remember, be careful who you're going with. Don't have casual sex. There's a reason why we have monogamy and marriage and everything. Because if they're a psycho out there, they're going to do bad things to you. Okay, so good night, everybody. Sorry about that little April Fool joke. I don't do that again. By April Fool next year this time, Jody's going to be uh, sitting on death row, I hope. Okay, bye-bye.